this tutorial, you'll find a way to simplify derivatives of functions multiplied by numbers. But let's start off with the function f of x. What's a formula for the derivative of f? The derivative is the slope of a tangent line. To find the slope of a tangent line, you pick two points that are very close to each other. If one is at x, choose another one that's at x plus h. And then you find the slope of that line. The y-coordinates are f of x and f of x plus h. So the formula for a derivative is f prime of x is going to be the change in y-coordinates, f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by the change in the x-coordinates, which is h. We want the limit as h gets close to zero. Right. The derivative of f of x is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h in the limit as h goes to zero. Now let's say you have another function, g of x. And for every input, the output of g is exactly three times the output produced by f. What's a formula for g in terms of f? If g is always three times greater than f for any given input, that means that if x equals 1, suppose x equals 1, and f of 1 was 7, that means g of 1 has to be three times greater, or 21. Using that example, can you figure out which choice is correct? Right, g is always 3 times f, so we can write that g of x equals 3 times f of x. You found a formula for the derivative of f. Now, what's a formula for the derivative of g? The definition of g prime of x is the limit, as h goes to 0, of g of x plus h minus g of x, all divided by h. Now we're told that g of x is always equal to 3 times f of x. So we can replace this second g of x with a 3 times f of x. Similarly, that g of x plus h can be replaced by 3 times f of x plus h. Okay, let's see how you got that. Here's the formula you found for the derivative of f. We can find the derivative of the function g by replacing these f's here with g's. And since we said g of x is the same thing as 3 times f of x, we can replace these g's with 3f. So if the function g equals 3 times the function f, then the derivative of g is the limit as h goes to 0 of 3f of x plus h minus 3f of x over h. Now, what's an equivalent way to write this derivative of g? Well, we can factor a 3 out of each term in the numerator. They both have a 3 in them. So this is now the limit as h goes to 0 of 3 times f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. We factored a 3 out of the entire numerator. Now, the limit of a constant times some function is just a constant times the limit of that function. So we can pull the 3 out front. Now, do you recognize what we're left with inside? Exactly. Let's quickly see how you got that. First, you can factor out a 3 in this numerator here so that it becomes 3 times f of x plus h minus f of x. This is the limit as h goes to 0, and the number 3 here that we're multiplying in the numerator doesn't change at all as h goes to 0, so we can pull it outside the limit without changing the value of this expression. And now, if you look at this limit here, you can see that it's the definition of the derivative for f of x, so this is f prime of x. So when g of x equals 3 times f of x, 
the derivative of g equals 3 times the derivative of f. Let's come up with a general rule for finding the derivatives of functions multiplied by constant numbers. Suppose you have a function f again, and now we're multiplying it by a. a can be any constant number, like 3 or negative 18 or pi. And now let's say you want to find the derivative of this product. What's an equivalent way to write this derivative? Now this constant that we pulled out, this 3, could have been anything. So g of x could have been a times f of x, in which case g prime of x could have been a times f prime of x. If that was the case, this is asking us what's the derivative of a times f of x, or a times g of x, that would have been a times f prime of x. And another way of writing that is a times the derivative of f of x. Excellent work. We can take the derivative of a constant times a function and pull the constant out. So for any constant a and function f, the derivative of a times f equals a times the derivative of f. All this theory is nice, but let's use this identity to find the derivative of an actual function. Let's look at the function 17 times the sine of x. What's the derivative of this function? Now we can use this rule. a is the thing that doesn't depend on x. In this case, it's 17. And f of x is the part that does depend on x. In this case, it's the sine of x. So this is equal to a times the derivative of f of x. And in this case, a is 17. So we can plug that in. And f of x is the sine of x. So we can plug that in. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, so we're left with 17 times the cosine of x. That's our answer. Here, you'll learn a way to find derivatives of functions that are added together. Let's start off with the function f of x. Here's a way to write down the derivative of f. Do you remember the formula that you can use to find this derivative? Remember that the derivative of a function is the slope of a tangent line at some value x. So if our function looks like this, we have some point x that we want to find the slope of a line at, we choose another point that's very nearby, say x plus h, we draw the line connecting them, and then to find the slope, the y value here is f of x, the y value here is f of x plus h. So the slope here is going to be f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. Now, to find the tangent line, we actually want this point to become very close to that point, or we want h to go to 0. So here, we just insert a limit as h goes to 0. That's the definition of a derivative. Right. The derivative of f of x is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h in the limit as h goes to 0. Now let's say you have another function, g of x. And let's suppose we're interested in the sum of these two functions, or f of x plus g of x. Let's find the derivative of this sum. What's the missing numerator over here in this expression for the derivative? We can call this function here, f of x plus g of x, s of x, for the sum of two other functions. Then our limit is going to become s of x plus h minus s of x, all divided by h. Now, what's s of x plus h? Well, s of x is defined as f plus g, so this is going to be f of x plus h plus g of x plus h. And s of x 
it's just f of x plus g of x here. When we plug both of these in, we get that the derivative of f plus g is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h plus g of x plus h minus f of x plus g of x. That's our answer. Exactly. Let's quickly see how you got that. To find the derivative of a function, you first want to evaluate the function when the input is x plus h. So for this sum of f and g, that would be f of x plus h plus g of x plus h. And then we want to subtract from that the function when the input is just x, so that's f of x plus g of x. Dividing by h and taking the limit as h goes to 0 gives us the derivative, so this is the right expression. We can now distribute the minus sign into this expression inside the brackets here. And that gives us a numerator of f of x plus h plus g of x plus h minus f of x minus g of x. Let's switch the order of the middle terms here. And we can split this fraction up into two fractions. Every term in the numerator here is divided by h, so let's split it up into these two fractions here. What do you think is the next step for simplifying this expression? Right now we have one big limit, and we really have no idea how to evaluate it. Now, if on the other hand, we had expressions like the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, and this was all by itself, we'd know what that is. That's just f prime of x. So if we had two expressions that looked like this, would be a lot better off than this one big limit here. How do we get there? Exactly. We're adding these two terms here and then taking the limit, which is the same thing as taking the limit of each of these terms and then adding the two limits together. Do these two expressions here look familiar? What are equivalent ways to write the derivative of f of x plus g of x? Let's start by looking at this first term here. You'll recognize that this is the definition of the derivative of f. So this term here is f prime of x, which can also be written as the derivative with respect to x of f. This term here is just the derivative of g. So that can be written as g prime of x, or the derivative with respect to x of g of x and they're added together. So we could have written that this whole thing is equal to f prime of x plus g prime of x, or that it's equal to the derivative with respect to x of f of x. It's another way of writing f prime of x, and this is another way of writing g prime of x. Right. This first expression, the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h goes to 0, is the same thing as the derivative of f of x. And similarly, this limit over here means the same thing as the derivative of the function g. It turns out that the derivative of the sum equals the sum of the derivatives. Okay, next question. What happens if we turn this plus sign into a minus sign? What's the derivative of f of x minus g of x? We could go through the trouble of rederiving that entire thing by plugging this into the definition of a limit, but there's an easier way. Let's say this function here, minus g of x, has a new name. Let's call it h of x. So h is negative 1 times g of x. Then this derivative becomes the derivative of f plus h. We know from this rule here that the derivative of f plus h is the derivative of f plus the derivative of h. What's h, though? 
h is just negative g. Negative 1 times g, so we can write that in here. This is going to be negative 1 times g of x. Finally, you know that you can take a constant out from in front of a derivative. That's the constant rule. So what you're left with is the derivative with respect to x of f minus the derivative with respect to x of g. Another way to write that is this whole thing is equal to f prime minus g prime. Nicely done. Yes, the derivative of f of x minus g of x equals the derivative of f of x minus the derivative of g of x. Sometimes you'll see these two rules combined using a plus or minus sign, shown here in blue. Okay, for the last question, we'll put this identity to work. Here's a polynomial, 5x cubed minus x squared plus 6x minus 14. What's the derivative of this polynomial? One rule that may help you out here, in addition to this one, is that whenever you're taking the derivative of a constant, say 7, times a function, say that function is x to the fourth, this constant factor that's being multiplied by the function can be dragged in front. So this is actually equal to 7 times the derivative of x to the fourth. And whenever you have the derivative of x to some power, at least a positive integer power, you can take the power and bring it in front of the x and then reduce it by 1. So you take this is 7 and the derivative of x to the fourth is going to be 4 times x cubed. So between this rule here, which lets you pull constants out, and this rule here, which tells you how to take the derivative of the sum of different functions, you should be able to figure out the answer. Why don't you give it a shot, and if you need another hint, ask for it. Okay, so the derivative of this big sum is just the sum of the derivatives. So this is equal to the derivative of the first expression, which is 5x cubed, minus, because of this minus sign here, the derivative of the second expression, which is x squared, plus the derivative of the third expression, minus the derivative of the fourth expression. Why don't you try calculating all of these derivatives and seeing if you can get the right answer. We said that the derivative of this big sum here is just the sum of all these derivatives down here. What are they? Well, let's start with the first one. The derivative of 5x cubed, now we can take the 5 out front, so it's 5 times the derivative of x cubed, and whenever we have the derivative of x cubed, we take the 3 down and reduce the power by 1. So we're going to have 5 in front times 3x squared, that's the derivative of x cubed, minus the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, plus the derivative of 6x, is plus 6. And finally, minus the derivative of 14. 14 is a constant which doesn't change as x changes, so that derivative is actually 0, minus 0. If we expand it and do the multiplication, we find that the answer is 15 times x squared minus 2x plus 6. Here, you'll learn a way to find derivatives of functions that are multiplied together, known as the product rule for derivatives. But to start off, do you remember how to find the derivative of sums? If you have two functions, f and g, what's the derivative of their sum? Right, the 
derivative of f of x plus g of x equals the derivative of f of x plus the derivative of g of x. Now let's see what happens when we want to find the derivative of f of x times g of x. You might think that the derivative of f of x times g of x equals the derivative of f times the derivative of g. Let's see if this is right. Suppose one of the functions is x, and the other function is x squared. If you take the derivative of x times x squared, is that equal to the derivative of x times the derivative of x squared? Well, the derivative on the left side here is the derivative of x cubed. The derivative here is the derivative of x, and this is the derivative of x squared. All of these look like the derivative of x to some power. So if you remember the rule that the derivative of x to the n is equal to n times x to the n minus 1, you should be able to figure out all of these derivatives and see if the statement is true or false. Right, the two sides here are not equal. In general, the derivative of a product does not equal the product of the two derivatives. Okay, so we know that this derivative doesn't equal the derivative of f times the derivative of g. But what is this derivative equal to? Let's find out. Let's use the definition of the derivative, which involves a limit as h goes to zero. For this derivative, what should the numerator be for this limit? Remember that the definition of a derivative is that the derivative y prime of x is equal to the limit, as h goes to zero, of y of x plus h minus y of x, all divided by h. Here our function y is f times g. So y of x plus h is f times g evaluated at x plus h. So it's f of x plus h times g of x plus h. Similarly, y of x is f times g evaluated at x. So it's f of x times g of x. Try making those substitutions in the definition of a derivative and see if you can get the answer. The derivative of f of x times g of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x over h. Let's find an equivalent expression for this numerator, and we can do that using rectangles. Suppose this green rectangle here has a length that equals f of x and a width that equals g of x. Whatever values f of x and g of x have, let's say this rectangle is f of x by g of x. And so the area of this green rectangle is f of x times g of x. Now suppose we have another rectangle whose length is f of x plus h and whose width is g of x plus h. Take another look at this numerator here. If we break up this diagram into three regions and we say the area of the green region is a, the area of the blue region is b, and the area of the yellow region is c, which regions have areas that add up to the numerator up here? The area of the very large rectangle here is the sum of the areas of the three smaller rectangles. So that rectangle has area A plus B plus C. And the area of the green rectangle A is just A. So we want this minus A. What does that give us? Exactly. Combining the areas of regions B and C gives you this expression up here. In other words, the area of this yellow region here equals the numerator up here. What's another expression for the area of this yellow region? The area of a rectangle is equal to the length times the width, but for each of these yellow rectangles, you only know one of those dimensions. For example, here, you know that the length or the width is g of x plus h, but you don't know this dimension here. To find it, note that this length is f of x, 
and this longer length is f of x plus h. So the difference is the missing length. So this is f of x plus h minus f of x. You can use that to find the area of this rectangle. To find the area of the other rectangle, again, you have one side, this is f of x here, but you don't know this side. Why don't you try using the same strategy to figure out that missing length? Nicely done. Let's quickly see how you got that. The length of this segment down here is g of x plus h minus g of x. And similarly, the length of this section up here equals f of x plus h minus f of x. We're looking for the area of the yellow region, which is the sum of the areas of these two rectangles. The area of a rectangle is its length times its width. So the rectangle on the left has an area of f of x times g of x plus h minus g of x. And the rectangle on the right has an area of g of x plus h times f of x plus h minus f of x. Adding these two areas together is an equivalent expression for this numerator. We can split this fraction up into two fractions, both with the same denominator h. And to find the limit of the sum of these two expressions, we can find the limit of the first fraction and add that to the limit of the second fraction. Now let's focus on this first limit. What's an equivalent expression for this limit? Exactly. It's a limit as h approaches zero f of x doesn't change as h goes to zero, so we can pull the f of x out of the limit. And if we look at what's remaining inside this limit, it's g of x plus h minus g of x over h. This limit is the same thing as the derivative of g, which we can write as g prime of x. Okay, now let's turn our attention to this second limit here. What's an equivalent way to write this limit? Remember that if you have the product of two functions, and you're trying to calculate a limit involving them, it's equal to the limit of the first function times the limit of the second function. Here, we have this function here, g of x plus h, multiplying this bigger function here, f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. Try using the limit rule for products to see if you can get the answer. Exactly. First, we can move the g of x plus h out of the numerator of this fraction. So inside the limit, we have a product, g of x plus h times this fraction here. And the limit of this product equals the product of the limits. Assuming g is a continuous function, meaning it doesn't have any breaks or discontinuities, then can you evaluate this limit? It's the limit as h goes to zero of g of x plus h. If g is a continuous function, it looks something like this. This is x, this is g, and the function looks sort of like this. If this is the point that we're interested in, say it's x, we want to know what happens as h gets close to zero. So we're interested in g of x plus h, which is this value over here. This is x plus h. This is g of x plus h. So what happens as h becomes very, very close to zero? Well, this point moves closer and closer to that point, and this point moves closer and closer to that point. So we're interested in the y-coordinate of this point here. What is that? Exactly. 
As h goes to 0, this expression becomes g of x. So, what's an equivalent expression for the derivative of f of x times g of x? Well, this thing here is just the definition of the derivative of f. So this is f prime of x. If that's f prime of x, which of the answer choices is equal to the derivative, the product of f and g? Right. This expression here, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, is the same thing as the derivative of f. So the derivative of f of x times g of x equals f times the derivative of g plus g times the derivative of f. Let's label the functions different colors so that this rule is a little easier to see. Another way to write the derivative of g here is to write it as dg over dx. You can read this aloud as dg dx, and it just means the derivative of g. The f prime of x over here can also be rewritten as df dx. If you want to memorize this rule, which is a pretty good idea, let's get rid of the x's in the parentheses. Just remember that f and g are functions of x. So if you want to find the derivative of the product of two functions, then that derivative equals the first function times the derivative of the second, plus the second function times the derivative of the first. Okay, let's put this rule to work. Let's look at the function x squared times e to the x. Try using the product rule for derivatives to find the derivative of this function here. Here, we have the product of x squared and e to the x. Let's call x squared f, so f is equal to x squared, and g can be e to the x. So we're taking the derivative of f times g. To use the product rule, we need f, g, dg dx, and df dx. What's df dx? Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x. And the derivative of e to the x, dg dx here, it's just e to the x. Once you have these four quantities, you can plug them in to the product rule. Try doing that to find the derivative of x squared times e to the x.